so obviously I'm not done with schematic here, but uh, what I'm going to do is do a quick schematic translate to PCB just to show you what it looks like. Um, you know, a little PCB wizard. It's fairly simple. Um, we'll just use a 4 inch by 4 inch board. That should be fine. Uh, just for demonstration purposes at this moment. You know, um, this wizard is sort of uh, specifically tailored to advanced circuits. You know, this is a free uh, program that they provide. So it's exactly tailored to uh, make it very simple for you to send your design to them uh, for them to build and for you to give them money. Uh, so we're just going to use a two layer standard board, fairly simple. And obviously, two layer board. Da da da. Um, you know, we've got you know, just some, uh, you know, fairly simple you know, requirements that we want. The material type flame retardant for, how thick it should be, you know, how much copper, one ounce copper per square foot, you know, different lead free solder, cold fingers, blah blah blah. You know, this stuff is mostly default. You don't really need to mess with it unless you're actually doing something special. Um, you know, different requirements. You know, whatever, you can put a name in here. Um, <clears throat> so, here's how we're going to start. We're going to tell it to arrange all of our items outside the board. So now, here we go. This is the PCB view. Um, this green line kind of indicates the size of our final printed circuit board and as you can see up here we've imported our LCD's you know PCB footprint and the PCB footprint of our 7106 chip um, so all these yellow lines are what's called the rat's nest which is to say um, they just they all indicate a connection between certain uh, pads or pins all over the place. So, you know, we can start off fairly simply and just, um, let's just say, drop our LCD right in the middle of this 4x4 board. Alright, and uh, we want to put our 7106 right underneath it. And maybe give it a few rotations, see if that makes the lines less tangled. Rotate it so many times I kind of forget what we're going on here. Alright, so. Uh, I think this. Well, it's a little hard to say. Okay, there's a lot of crisscrossing. But this looks like the least messed up. So, obviously, what we've got here is uh, number one, you know, you can. You can route things from <clears throat> going out from here all the way to make an actual connection. Or, you know, uh, something like this, and uh, that, oops, connection between two items already exists. Alright, so, you know, that connection's made and it's fine and it works. Um, you can also make something like uh, you want to go out here and change oops, change layers to let's say the bottom copper and so it'll drop in via and then this blue indicates that it's actually the bottom copper so it's on the other side of the board coming across so um, obviously uh, you can manual route which is uh, personally I prefer that because it's you, know, you get more control, but there's also a lot of really nice tools here. You can auto place, auto route all nets, and you know uh, it'll. You can uh, give it some different you know rules to follow, some how much it needs, how much work it needs to do, basically, and tell it to route, and boom, it will go ahead and automatically route all of these connections for you which is pretty nice, you know, pretty convenient. So that just gives you an idea of the, f the PCB side of things. 
So, yeah, eventually we're going to have a lot more components, a lot more traces. So, yeah, it's going to get interesting. <laughs>